Hello and good day to all my students. Today is the first uh, presentation of a long and arduous topic which is called investment appraisal. So before we begin our uh, video lecture today, I would like you to open your textbook uh, to chapter 9 which is the capital budgeting. So if you notice into the title, I have stated there to be investment appraisal part 1 because of the length of the topic. I have separated the video lecture into two parts for your convenience and also to, to not overburden uh, you. So without further ado, let's start this chapter. So the, these are the topics that we're going to cover for this session. Uh, we start off with the introduction of the topic and then we're going to go through some of the guidelines for relevant cash flows and then we're going to see how do we calculate the cash flows and then we're going to discuss some of the capital budgeting techniques that we're going to use to assess whether the project is worth investing or not. So what is capital budgeting or investment appraisal? It is a process of decision making of selecting and evaluating long term investments. So why is it important for us to invest in long term investment? Because these types of position will increase the firm's value as well as shareholders wealth. Because in order for us to maintain or to increase the value of the firm, we need to invest our resources, okay? either in introducing new products or we want to invest in new assets or we want to open up new branch. These are all uh, activities that will add values to our firm. So there are two types of capital budgeting. One is mutually exclusive project, meaning that you have a series of alternate alternative project to choose but you can only choose one project maybe due to the scarcity of your resources okay and the other is the independent project meaning that acceptance of one project doesn't affect the others you can choose more than one project so the types of project can either be the expansion type of project such as introducing new product or opening up new branch or it can, ask, it can also be the replacement of assets. So these are the guidelines for relevant costs. Okay, so we have eight guidelines for you to know and to consider when you do your capital budgeting technique later on. Okay, so the first uh, guideline is we going we are going to concentrate on the cash flow and not the accounting profit. Okay, so it means that we're going to exclude all the non-cash item, for example, depreciation. But you have to consider that tax is a cash item. Okay, however, tax is calculated based on profit before tax, not on cash flow. Therefore, we're going to take first all the non-cash item, the depreciation. We're going to deduct it first to get profit before tax. For us to calculate tax, after that, we're going to add back all the non-cash items that we have deducted for us to get back our cash flows. You're going to see that later on when we do some practices. And then we're going to focus on the incremental cash flow, only the additional benefits and costs after the new project are included in our assessment. And then we're going to include synergistic effect, meaning that new product can increase the existing product sales. So this is especially true if the products are complementary in nature. For example, let's say you want to uh, introduce to your customer a new software. Okay, and of course, once the new software have, has been launched, the sales of the hardware, the computer or whatever 
the software is intended for will be increased as well because in order for the customer to use the software they need to buy the hardware first so they are complementary in nature and then we also need to consider the revenue loss from the existing product uh, this is uh, for product that has competitive nature for example if you are introducing a new product that um, that's making the previous product obsolete for example the the the, the sales of uh, PlayStation 5 has caused the sales of PlayStation 3 or 4 to be decreased because uh, PlayStation 5 uh, replaced the previous uh, series of the PlayStations. Okay, and then we ignore sunk cost. So what is sunk cost? Sunk cost is something that has already been incurred and cannot be changed. For example, let's say that you are uh, curious whether your customer will be amiable if if you introduce a new product so to know uh, the customer's feedback you did some sort of market survey okay so you spend some money and then you ask your customers whether they will be they would like to for the product for the new product to be marketed and then the market survey comes in and it says that yes customers are excited for the new product then you decide whether you want to invest in the new project or not by doing the investment appraisal okay so whether you decide whether you decide to take up the new project or not you can no longer change the cost that you have paid to do the market survey because it's already been incurred and it cannot be changed so when you want to invest the project you do not include the market survey cost in the investment appraisal because the market survey cost is sunk cost next we include the opportunity cost so this is the cost of sacrificing one cash flow for another for example let's say that uh, in your factory you have an extra space that you have rented out to another tenant however the new product the need the new project that you want to undertake uh, requires you to have that space perhaps to perhaps to um, accommodate the machine or perhaps to uh, store the additional inventory for whatever reasons the new project needed that space therefore if you take up this project you're going to lose the rental revenue that you receive for your tenant every month so the loss of the revenue the rental revenue is what we call as opportunity cost and you need to add that in the investment appraisal where you want to take up the project uh, the next one is working capital requirement of course if the asset that you purchase has additional capacity your working capital will be increased as well and this will be included as part of the initial outlay and, of, and lastly we ignore interest payment why because later on when we want to uh, assess whether the project should be invested or not we're going to present value our cash flows so remember we have already covered that topic in the previous weeks okay so the discount rate that we use to present value the cash flows within the discount rate has has already the interest rate okay so if you deduct the interest payment in your cash flow and then you present value your cash flow you have double counted the interest payment so we do not include any interest payment in the calculation of cash flow because later on when we present value our cash flow the elements of interest will be uh, incorporated next we're going to see how do we calculate the relevant cash flows So we're going to go straight to tutorial questions uh, for further and for further understanding. 
So this is the tutorial question number one. So first thing we need to calculate is the initial outlay or the initial investment. So this is the investment or the expenses that we incur in the current year. To calculate the initial outlay, we need to consider three categories. First, we need to calculate first the cost of the asset that we want to purchase. Okay, let's say the investment that we want to invest is the new assets. So the first category is to calculate the cost of asset. So the cost of asset applies the same principle in financial reporting, meaning that all the capital expenditure that you learn in paper uh, in the financial reporting paper are applicable here, such as the purchase price, the installation cost, the import duty cost, the shipping cost, so on and so forth. We need to add them all up to be part of the cost of asset. Next, we need to incorporate the working capital requirement. Is there any increment in the working capital? So working capital consists of current asset, which are the inventory and debtors, minus the current liability, which is the creditors. And then we calculate the disposal of all asset if there is any. For example, that we are replacing the old asset, right? So if we purchase the new asset, we need to dispose of the old assets. So relevant cash flow for disposal of, of all assets are the sales proceeds and the tax paid on the gain or disposal and also on the tax paid on the gain or disposal uh, as well as tax loss or sorry or tax gain if we are making loss when we dispose of our assets. Okay, so this is the example of past year question um, with regard to in investment appraisals. So this question talks about the company wanting to buy a new machine to replace its existing machines. So usually in the past year question, the first paragraph is all about the old machine, usually. And then it will, follow, it will be followed by the second paragraph that usually talks about the new machine, about what, how much you need to incur in order to get the new machine. And usually the third paragraph, they will talk about the effect of the new machine on the business operations, such as what happened to the sales, what happened to the expenses that they usually incurred. Okay, so we're going to find the benefit the incremental benefit or the reduction in the cost uh, to be reflected in our appraisals so for initial for initial outlay we're going to calculate what is the cost that we have to incur in order to get the new machine so it consists of three main items which are the cost of assets disposal of all assets Okay, disposal of all assets and also inventory, uh, the incremental in working capital. But in this question, you can see that there is no information with regard to the incremental in the working capital. So we only have to include cost of assets and disposal of all assets. But if you look in the second paragraph, it talks about the in order to operate the new machine, two employees will be sent for training which requires the company to spend 6000 per employee. So we consider this to be as sunk, uh, to, to be as initial cost in order to, to make the machine operational. Okay, uh, aside from these costs that we need to incur to install or to get the machine into the factory, we also need to incur the training cost uh, because it is part of the cost to make the new machine usable so the cost of new assets uh, are all of the follows 500,000 25,000 for modifications shipping costs of 14,000 insurance um, uh, of 5,000 and also import duties of 8,000 okay so the total cost of the new asset is 602,000 ringgit this, uh, this is the figure that you're going to use when you want to calculate depreciation for the new machine. Okay.
okay not 550,000 yeah? the cost for the new machine is 602,000 and then you add in the trading cost which is 12,000 and then we calculate the disposal of all asset so you have to remember when we dispose of all asset this is cash in flow as opposed to when we purchase a new asset this is cash out flow so when you want to find the initial outlay which is the cash outflow you need to minus out the disposal of all asset because this is cash inflow okay so sales proceed 170,000 so you can see here the machine can be sold today to another firm for 170,000 okay and you also need to calculate the tax gained or tax loss okay, whichever is applicable uh, when we, we sell off the machine so how do we calculate tax gain or tax loss a uh, tax is calculated based on gain or loss on disposal so we need to calculate first whether we have loss on disposal or gain on disposal so to calculate the profit on the disposal we need to compare cost uh, sales proceeds with the net book value of the old machine so calculate first the net book value cost minus the accumulated depreciation so 350,000 uh, minus 10,000 10, because that is the salvage value divided by the useful life of 10 years okay because it says it was bought five years ago and it can be used for another five years so the total useful life is 10 years so uh, our yearly depreciation is 34,000 times with the five years that we have used to make up the accumulated depreciation so we minus cost with the accumulated we get the net book value of 180,000 so we compare them with the sales proceed in order to determine loss or gain on disposal so we can clearly see that we have we are making loss on disposal since we are selling less than the net book value okay so if we are making loss on disposal we get some sort of tax gain from the uh, tax revenue in board meaning that uh, we get uh, some sort of tax deductible we don't have to pay this this much of tax okay so this is cash in flow cash in flow if it's tax gain based on tax on loss on disposal this is cash in flow but if I get gain on disposal whereby sales policy is more than the net than the net value I get the gain on disposal then I have to pay for the tax so it becomes tax expense or tax loss or tax paid so tax pay is a cash out flow so if you get a tax loss here please minus out from the sales proceed because this is cash inflow tax paid is cash out flow so you need to minus the two figure out but since both tax gain and sales proceed are cash inflow then we simply add the two items we get 172,400 this is cash inflow compare it with the cash outflow therefore our net cash outflow is 441,600 all right so the next one is the differential cash flow so how do we calculate the differential cash flows so we need to consider the three items which is the incremental benefit uh, what are the example of incremental benefits when we experience increase in revenue or decrease in expense and we also have to uh, include the calculations of incremental costs uh, in this case incremental costs are referring to the increase in expenses and decrease in revenue and then we calculate any tax payable uh, based from the incremental benefit and the incremental cost we calculate tax payable uh, by adding in the non cash item because tax is calculated based on profit not on the cash inflow okay we add first the non cash item which is the depreciation to the incremental profit and then we find out the tax pay uh, tax payable and then we deduct back take out back the depreciation because we want to have the cash flow here the differential cash flow okay so we'll see what's uh, how we do it 
same questions. So for the differential cash flow, we're going to use the third paragraph here. Uh, the sales and operating expenses for the existing machine for the current year and the forecasted figures in the in using the new machine, excluding depreciation, are as follows. So this is the incremental benefit or the incremental cost. Okay, so we see, for example, this is the level of sales, operator expense, labor cost, electricity charges, defect cost if you are using the existing machine. So this is the uh, the new figure if the company used the new the new machine. Okay. So from here we can see that if we, the, the company used the new machine, the sales increase okay, to 910,000. So the first five, one, first, for the first until the fifth years, meaning that year one, year two, year three, year four, year five, we're going to have an annual incremental in sales of 260,000. Okay. For year six, seven, and eight, we're going to have an incremental sales of. We find the difference between here and here, uh, three hundred and ninety thousands. And then for the expenses, we can see that for operator expenses, it, it has increased. So therefore, it should be under the incremental cost. So incremental cost reduces your cash flows. So oh, we put that under the incremental cost. We deduct the figure 102 minus 85 for first year until the fifth year we're going to experience annual incremental in operator expenses of 17,000 for six seven and eight year we're going to have incremental operator expense of 34,000 so we go on to the labor cost see the labor cost has decreased here yeah, perhaps because the machine requires less worker Therefore, decrease in labor cost is to be put under the incremental benefit because it is a reduction in expenses. Okay, labor charges has increased, so we put that under the incremental cost, 8,000, 8,000. And defect cost has also been reduced uh, by 3,000 for the first five years and 1,500 for the last three years. So we put that under the incremental benefits. So here we can see the total incremental benefit for the first five years is 274,000 and for the last three years is 402,500. Okay, and then we minus out with the incremental cost. We minus 17,000, 8,000, 38,000. So where, where does the 88,000 comes from? From the incremental in the non-cash item, which is the depreciation, because we want to find first the profit in order for us to calculate the tax. Okay, so how do we calculate the incremental in the depreciation? We compare all depreciation with the new depreciation. So we have already calculated the old depreciation where we calculate the tax gain uh, for the loss uh, for the disposal of all assets, which is uh, 34,000 per year. For the new depreciation, okay, we are, we've already calculated the cost of the new machine, which is the 602,000, not the 550,000. Okay, you must take the, the subtotal of the cost of new assets, which means you need to include all of the capital expenditure, modification, the shipping, the insurance, the import duties. So we put all of them together. The cost of the new asset is 602,000 minus out any salvage value, 20,000 here, divided by the useful life, which is eight years. Eight years. So the new depreciation is 72,750. So therefore, the incremental in depreciation is 38,750. So we put there under the incremental cost in order for us to get the profit before tax. Then we calculate the tax, which is 24%. Uh, the tax is the cash outflow is 50,460 uh, ringgit. So we get the profit after tax, 159,000. We, we don't want the profit, we want the cash flow. So we add back the non-cash item, uh, 38,750. Therefore, our after tax cash inflow, cash inflow is 198,540 ringgit for the first five years and 232,000. 
283,280 for the last three years. Okay, the third cash flow that we need to calculate is the terminal cash flow. So we consider is as the cost that we need to um, that we're going to receive at the end of the useful life of the uh, of the new machine, the new asset that we have purchased. So terminal cash flow consists of two items, two uh, things which are the which are the uh, recovered working capital recovered and also the salvage value the amount that we get if we sell off the assets so in this case the minimum cash flow we only have two items here there are no working capital recovered in this question therefore uh, we put it as none but the salvage value is 20,000 therefore the terminal cash flow is 20,000 Okay, for tutorial question number two, uh, I took another example, uh, which is the initial outlay, uh, which is from past question. Therefore, we calculate first the initial outlay here. As usual, you can see that the first paragraph is all about the old machine. Okay, and then followed by the information about the new machine here. Okay, followed by the information about the new machine. And they also have uh, included in in the second paragraph the incremental cost or the incremental benefit of the new machine okay so you put in the item first cost of new asset consists of the purchase price of the new asset to come here where is that the purchase price of the new machine is two million so put it here two million uh, excluding custom duty, so we need to add in the custom duty of 60,000, 20,000, and 10,000 respectively. Therefore, the cost of a new machine is 2,090,000. So, here we have the information about the working capital required, and we know that it consists of inventory, account receivable, minus the account payable. So, here the new machine will require additional 210,000 inventory, so put there. And there are no other information about the working capital. So put a dash here, dash here. Therefore, our working capital required is 210,000. Okay. So here is a last year the company spent 33,000 training on their workers. So here they see the word, see the word spent here. It's already been spent past year. Already been spent, cannot be changed anymore whether you choose to buy or not to buy the machine okay whether you choose to buy the new machine or not to buy the machine you cannot go back in time and change the 33,000 that you have already spent to train your workers so this is sunk cost so what we do with sunk cost we ignore the sunk cost ignore it okay don't put it anywhere in the calculations Okay, so and you put in the information about the disposal of all assets. So here, here, the, 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 the disposal of all assets, the information here. Uh, okay, the old machine was bought three years ago for 900,000 with a useful life of 10,000 and the salvage value of 100,000. The current market value for the machine is 880,000. So here is our sales proceed. This is the information for us to calculate the gain, uh, tax paid or tax uh, gain. Okay, tax, pay, tax loss. Clear. Okay, so calculate first the gain on disposal sales minus the net book value. Our accumulate, uh, our net book value is 660,000. Therefore, the gain on disposal is 280. So previous example, we get loss on disposal. Therefore, it is a tax loss. Sorry, tax gain, tax gain, because we get a loss on disposal, so we get a tax gain. So in this example, we get a gain on disposal, so we need to pay tax for that gain that we receive from the disposal of the assets. So the the tax that I need to pay is fifty five thousand. This is cash outflow. Sales proceed, sales proceed is cash inflow. Tax paid is cash outflow. So we need to minus the two figure out. Therefore, our net cash inflow is 825,000. 
So we minus up with the cash outflow from the cost of assets, cash outflow from the incremental in working capital required. And then we get a net cash outflow of 1,475,000. For differential cash flow, okay, there are no uh, separate years. It's just stated here that the present machine will generate revenue of 2 million annually for the rest of the useful life. So what's the useful life of the new machine? The, 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 the useful life of the new machine is 7 years so our cash flow is from year one until year seven we look at the useful life of new machine okay so we need to compare present machine get two million new machine uh where is it uh, new machine expected to generate revenue of three million so we have an incremental of sales by one million and then uh, the cost of defect previously was for uh, 125,000. And with the new machine, the cost of defect is only 35,000. So we need we have a decrease in defect of 90,000. On the other hand, we also have to incur incremental cost of overhead. Previously, it was only 500,000. Now it is okay. Uh, now it is 800,000. Therefore, the incremental cost is 300,000 and also the increase in the depreciation, all depreciation, 900,000, uh, 900, the cost, divided by 10 years. Uh, and then we have the service value. Eh? So minus up for the first the service value divided by 10 years. All depreciation was 80,000. New depreciation, take the new cost of asset minus the service value divided by 7 years we get the new depreciation to be this figure and therefore the difference is 182,857 ringgit so we get the profit before tax calculate tax of 25 percent uh, add back with the depreciation we get the after tax cash inflow of 638,214 the service uh, the terminal cash flow the service value is 250 here the new machine and we also have the working capital, remember, in the initial outlay of 210,000. So you add here, you get 460,000. Alright, we go to the next uh, example, the, th the third example. Uh, this is another question from the past year. Okay, calculate the initial outlay. Okay, uh, here we have the the cost of the new machine uh, is 250,000, which include 25,000 uh, charges and 35,000 installation cost. In that is, this is already inclusive of everything that we needed uh, to pay to make the asset operation. Uh, and the working capital required recovered. We have initial, uh, we have additional inventory of 20,000, and also increase in account receivable by 30,000. Therefore, our capital required is 50,000. And disposal of all asset, uh, sales proceed here. What's the sales proceed for the all asset? At present, the machine can be sold for 120,000. So we calculate the, uh, determine first whether we get a gain on disposal or loss on disposal. So in this case, we get a gain on disposal of 20,000. Therefore, we need to pay tax of 5,000. Our disposal of all asset only have cash inflow of 115,000. Therefore, our initial outlay is 185,000. Okay, for differential cash flow, uh, here is stated. Um, okay, since the new machine is fully op automated, the firm is able to increase its sales by. See the word by. So this is all. This is already incremental by 85,000 for the first three years. One, two, three, 85,000. Uh, and then uh, 70,000 for the remaining year. So what is the remaining year? Look for the useful life of the, new, the, of the new machine, five years. So the remaining years is year four and year five. Okay, 75,000. And then cost of defect will uh, decrease by 10,000. Put there 10,000, 10,000. And operating expense will increase by 15,000. So put that 
thousands. Okay, and then you calculate the depreciation here. You get a uh, incremental depreciation of twenty eight thousand every year for the next five years. Calculate the profit, and then calculate the tax, and then you add back the non cash item. You get the cash after that cash inflow of sixty five thousand sixty seven thousand for the first three years, and fifty five thousand seven hundred and fifty for the last two years. Terminal cash flow consists of salvage value and rookie capital recovered. Therefore, terminal cash flow is 60,000. Alright, so once we have the cash flows, then, we, then can we decide whether we want to accept the new project or should we reject the new project? So there are many techniques that we can adopt to determine whether the, the project is acceptable or not. So we have um, separate them into two types. One is for the non-discounted cash flow methods and the other one is the discounted cash flow methods. So under the non-discounted cash flow methods, we have the payback period and the accounting rate of return. Uh, for the discounted cash flow method, we have the net present value, the internal rate of return, the modified internal rate of return, the discounted payback period and the profitability index. So we're going to see one by one how do we calculate uh, these techniques to determine whether the project is acceptable or not. Okay, for non-discounted cash flow method, we have two methods. One is the payback period and the other one is the accounting rate of return. So payback period measures how quickly the firm can recover its initial investment. So project that gives you profit as early as possible is the best uh, project that you can choose. Okay. Uh, for the accounting rate of return, it compares the average after tax profit with the average investment made. So this uh, method use profit, not cash flows. Okay. So formula for the payback period is the initial outlay divided by the initial cash flow. I'm going to see this later on how we calculate properly. Okay, uh, decision criteria for payback period is we choose the one with the earliest payback period, the lowest figure that we can find. And for the AROR, we accept if it's more than the firm's minimum AROR. We're going to see this later on. What are the advantages of payback period? It's easy to calculate, reflects true timing of benefit and cost, can be used as screening process. Uh, the disadvantages, ignore time value of money, ignore cash flow up after project period and bias against long term project. Meaning that if the project is in long term, then usually payback period we say it's not a good project, but which is not entirely true. Okay. For the discounted method, we have the NPV. Okay, uh, the, so for here, I'm just going to uh, talk about the definitions and the decision criteria. The advantage and disadvantage you can read on your own. Uh, the definition here is that we measure the difference between the present value of cash inflow with initial outlay. Okay, so if the present value of our initial of our cash flow is more than the initial outlay, then we accept the project. For the IRR, we determine the rate of return of investment. So if the rate of investment is higher than the cost of capital, then we accept. Uh, for the modified, we uh, determine the rate of future value of cash inflow uh, when it is equal to the cash outflow. Okay, so we accept if the modified IRR is more than the cost of capital. Okay. Uh, for the discounted payback period, this is the same as payback period, only that we discount our cash flow before we calculate the, disc the, the payback period. Okay. The decision criteria is the same. We, use, we choose the lowest uh, discounted payback period. Profitability index uh, to measure whether the, proj the project yields positive return or not. So we accept if PI is more or equals to 1. Okay. So 
continue on from the first tutorial question that we have calculated. Remember, we have already calculated in Shaoli. We already calculated the differential cash flows uh, for the first year to the fifth year, sixth to the eighth year. And we also have calculated the terminal cash flow, which occurs at the end of the useful life, which is on the eighth year. So initial outlay happens on the year zero. Terminal cash flow happens on the eighth year, the end of the previous period. And the uh, differential cash flow is the cash flow that we receive for the every year until the end of the year cash flow. So prepared period or discounted prepared period uses uh, in which we use our cost of capital as the present value fa uh, factor rate. It's a technique to determine how soon the firm will get back its initial outlay. So we want to see uh, at which year can we get back our initial outlay. So in this case, year one, we already received 198,000. For the second year, we have accumulated cash inflow of 397,000. For the third year, we have, we have accumulated 595,000. So payback period is between year two and year three because year three, we already out exceed our initial outlay. So payback period is two years, but how many months? Uh, so we can calculate the months uh, by using this formula initial outlay minus the accumulated cash flow for year two divided by the cash flow on year three. So 441,600 minus the 397,000 divided by the 198,000. So we get payback period to be at 2.22 uh, years. Okay. If if the question asks for the discounted payback period, okay, it's the same thing. Only first we need to discount the cash flow first. So where do I get the twelve percent? This is the cost of capital given in the questions. Okay, so we can take the cost of capital as our present value in this rate. Uh, so we find the present value for the first cash flow, second cash flow, third cash flow. So we can see that. The discounted cash flow here, and then we find the accumulated cash flows still between two to three years, except it has become 2.75 years, much longer because we have already discounted the cash flows. Okay, for the AROR for the tutorial questions, okay, we need to find first the profit. Okay, so the profit is the amount that we get before we add back the depreciation. Uh, after we add back the depreciation, it becomes the cash inflow. But before we add back the depreciation, we already have the profit after tax. So we put in the figures here. Okay, so we average the accounting profit. So add all the profit here add, and then we divide by it. Yes, try to find the average. And then we find the average investment. Average investment is the initial outlay plus with the terminal cash flow divided by 2. So here our AROR is 664%, which is much, much higher than the cost, which means we should accept this. Okay. Okay, same question. Now we want to use the technique of NPV, net present value. Okay, net present value is to determine whether the present value of cash inflow outweigh the present value of cash outflow. So if our inflow more than outflow, then we accept the project. Okay, so present value, we want to bring all the cash flow here to year zero to make it comparable. I want to bring here this, 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 this to year zero. So this is the same as we have done in the time value of money. Okay, year one to year five, this is our cash flow. Year six to year eight, this is our cash flow. Uh, so this is NVT. We can use NVT year five, 3.6048. Here is also NVT, but we need to minus NVT eight minus NVT. 
Okay, 4.69676 minus 3.0048. And then, uh, terminal cash flow is a single cash flow. So, this is not an annuity. So, use simple price and value at, uh, at, at 8 years. 0 0.4039. So, find the discounted cash flow here. You get the present value of cash inflow of 1,109,829. Ringgit. Compare it with the initial outlay, 441,600. So you get the profit of 668,000. So MPV is positive, therefore the profit should be accepted. So how do we calculate profitability index using the, these questions? Okay. Uh, so we already have the net present value here. So the PI is 1 plus NPV minus uh, divided by initial outlaw, outlay or you can use the other formula which is the present value of cash inflow minus the initial outlay. So I can use the 368,000 here to find the index or I can use the 1 million here to find the index. So here PI is 2.51 so PI is more or equal than 1 therefore the project should be accepted. Okay, so we now we look at the tutorial question number two. How do we calculate the techniques that we have? So our payback period, so this is our cash flows. Okay. Uh, year one until year seven, this is our differential cash flows and terminal cash flows, 460,000. So as usual, we put in to find the accumulated cash flow to find out at which year it's become more than the initial outlay. So in this case, uh, after second year, the payback, uh, the accumulated cash flow is already outweigh the initial outlay. So put in all the formula, you get the payback period to be at 2.31 years. Okay. For the discounted cash flow, also similar, we take the uh, cost of capital as our uh, discount factor, discount interest. Uh, calculate for the discounted cash flow and then we find out at which year PP is more than the, uh, which year discounted, accumulate, discounted accumulated cash flow is more than the initial outlay. So here it's somewhere between year 3 to year 4, which is much longer than the uh, payback period without the discounted. So here it becomes 3.2 years. Okay, for the ROR, again, you can add all of the uh, profit after tax here, divide by 7 years, which you get back at 455.357, divide by the average investment, uh, initial outlay, uh, plus with the terminal cash flow, we get the ROR to be at 47%. Okay, initial uh, NPV, so this is annuity, we can simply use annuity of 7 years, uh, plus with the uh, discount for the terminal cash flows, we get the present value of cash inflow to be at 2,428,000, uh, minus with the initial outlay, we get a positive of 953,000, so it's positive, therefore the project should be accepted. For the profitability index, we can either use this formula or this formula. Put in the figure and you get the PI to be at 1.65, which is more or equal than 1. Therefore, the project should be accepted. Okay, for number 3, for number 3, uh, this is the, again, this is how we calculate the payback period. And this is how we calculate the discounted payback period. So you can uh, look uh, on your, on your own leisure time after this. Uh, this is also how we calculate the accounting rate of return. Again, you can watch this, uh, look this for your own at your own leisure time. Okay. Uh, this is the net profit, net present value. Right. Get the positive net present value here. Therefore, the project should be accepted. And this is the profitability index. Uh, more or equal than one therefore it should be accepted okay 
So the previous two questions, we cannot use the itinerary of return because the profit is too high. It's too high. The net, the net profit, the net present value is too high, so we cannot find the rate in which MPV becomes zero. But third question, the, this, the, this, the third tutorial question, we can find the IRR. Okay. So IRR is determined is to determine the rate when the NPV is zero. Okay, we need to find the NPV with negative value and then find the rate in between the positive and the negative NPV by interpolation method. Okay, so we have already calculated the NPV on the previous question. We've already calculated the NPV to be at 12% at is positive at 42,987. Okay. So I would like to find the IRR here. The IRR here is when MPV is zero. So at what rate that we use that will give a zero net positive, net present value? So we cannot try one rate by uh, a rate by another rate until we get the MPV zero. It will not feasible. It will not be feasible. But what 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 we can do instead is we can find one rate that will give us positive MPV. And the other rate that will give a negative MPV, and we do an interpolation method to find the rate in the middle of it. In the middle of it. So here I try at 28. Yeah, since the 42,000 is quite far away from zero. Okay, so it's I meaning that it's quite far away. So let's try a further rate. Okay, if 12% is already positive. If you want to find negative MPV, you should go higher rate. Okay, it should go higher rate. So we try at 28%. But let's say you have calculated this previously and it gives you negative MPV. If you want to find positive MPV, you should go lower rates. Okay. Alright, so we go higher at 28%. I try it at 28%. Uh, and I did get negative MPV at 5,361 ringgit. Meaning that the IRR is between 12% and 28%. The IRR is between 12% and 28%. So take this formula from the textbook. Yeah, meaning that the percentage of low, which one is lower, 12 or 28? 12. We take first 12. And then we add, put in the bracket, uh, positive MPV first, divide by the distance between the two MPVs. 42 minus, minus, uh, minus negative 5361. So negative, so it becomes positive here. And then times with the distance between the two rate, 28 minus the 12%. And then you add with the 12% here. Our IRR is 26.23%. So if you use this, if you replace this with 26.23%, we shall get zero MPV. So what does it mean? It means that the yield rate, the what what is the yield, the return, the return rate for this project is 26.23%. Okay, meaning that if our cost is much higher than 26%, then we are making loss. Okay? But in this case, the cost that we use to, to, to present value the MPV in the first place is 12%. The cost is only 12%, which is much lower than the return. Therefore, the project should be accepted. This is our return, 26%. This is our cost, 12%. Return is more than cost, so we accept. If the return is less than cost, then we re reject. Okay. So modify internet of return is we want to know the rate when today future cash flow inflow is equal to the present value of cash outflow. Okay. So I want to know, uh, meaning that I want to bring all this cash flow, year one, year two, year three, year four, year five cash flow to the future. Okay. And I want to know at what rate. If I bring in, bring them to the future, that will give me uh, the value equals to the initial outlay. Okay, initial outlay. 
So first of all, bring all of this cash flow to the future first. Uh, meaning that uh, 64,000 here, 67,000 bring to the year 5. This bring year to year 5. And this bring to the year 5. This bring to the year 5. And this is already at year 5. So you don't have to future value it. Okay, so the future value of the cash in flow, all of them at, at the end of year 5 is 461,908. Okay, so I want to know what is the rate here that will give me this value to be equal at for uh, to be equal with the 185,000. Okay, so put in the, the, the equation here, 185,000 equals to 461. 908 divided by, I want to know what is the rate here, 1 plus the rate I don't know, power to the 5, because 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, okay, so we calculate reverse, um, we divide this thing first, we get 2.4968 and then we transfer it to the, the other side, power becomes square root, power becomes square, kuasa uh, 5 jadi punca kuasa lah. So, square to the 5, you got 1.2008. Here is uh, plus. So, bring to the other side of the equation, become minus 1. So, here, MIRR is 20.08%. Or you can look at the table. Yeah, Meaning that you get 2.4968 here. Look at the table. Um, uh, look at the table here. Uh, uh, oh, I used the future present value here. Sorry, present value. So look at the present value table. You get around approximately 20%. So it's higher than the cost, which is 12%. Therefore, the project should be accepted. Okay. So this is the end of part one of the capital budgeting. So I will upload to you several passive questions that you can uh, try to do on your own together with the answer for that question. Thank you and I'll see you soon.